Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Troubleshooting Memory. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we'll go through the requirements from our 22702, Section 1.2, our practical application exam, where we need to detect problems, we need to troubleshoot these components, and we're going to focus in this video on troubleshooting and managing the memory troubleshooting process. The troubleshooting process for memory can be a bit complicated because memory, of course, is one of those components inside of our computer that is used all the time for many, many different purposes. It is a very, very important component because when it fails, everything else falls down around it. It's not like you're losing video or losing audio. Your computer will stop if the memory's not working properly. So one of the things that you can do if you think you're having a memory problem is to go in and have a look at the memory modules themselves. Make sure that they're working the way you would expect. If you have another computer that is exactly the same model, perhaps you're, you can take the memory out of that computer and replace it and see if indeed you're getting the same results from the original computer with the new memory inside of it. If it's now working properly, then you can bet that perhaps those memory modules or something associated with those was to blame. If you have questions about exactly the type of memory modules in your computer, you should look at the motherboard configuration or the model configuration specifications in the manual and make sure that the memory that you have inside of your computer matches exactly what the manufacturer says that you should be running in there. There's very, very little room for deviation here. You need to be sure everything matches up. The motherboard expects a certain type of memory, and you must provide the exact type of memory to be assured that your computer is going to work properly. Also check, maybe it's just a physical problem. Is the memory seated properly? Or do you have it in there and is it locked in the way you should? Maybe you should pull it out and put it back in again and make sure those connections are nice and tight. And you can look at your memory slots to do that. The memory slots themselves, they may be sticking straight up out of the motherboard. They may be at an angle like these particular memory connections are. And if you look very close, you should be able to see if they're pushed all the way down. You'll be able to see the connectors and you'll be able to know pretty pretty clearly whether this is all the way into a slot or not. Now, usually memory's not going to, you'll know immediately looking at this if there's a problem because it's not even attached in. But sometimes you'll be able to look at that and wonder, is that really the best connection it can be? And sometimes just reseating it will solve the problem there. If it's in there exactly the way you would expect, then you would have these connectors on the end would be now connected into those slots. You shouldn't see a lot of copper sticking out of here. It should be very uniform across that link. And that tells you just by looking at it, that looks like a pretty good connection there. I can feel very secure that the memory that I put in on this particular slot is installed properly. If we physically seated everything properly in our computer and we're still having problems, maybe we need to run some additional diagnostics and software and really put our memory through a number of tests. There are a few places you can go to do this. The motherboard manufacturer probably has a diagnostic program that either ship with the motherboard or something you can download from their website that will test the motherboard communicating to the memory, see if that's working properly. If this is a new computer, you run that test, and it fails, you know you can call the manufacturer of the computer and say, I just bought this. It's under warranty. The memory test failed. It was your test. Therefore, we know that there's a problem with the memory. So that's a, a quick fix. You can also use a memory diagnostics that comes in Windows. Windows has a nice utility that can run through some memory tests in case you don't have access to any others. And lastly, if you do have the ability to download something from ultimatebootcd.com, it has a number of diagnostics, memory diagnostics programs built right into that with a lot of different capabilities and functionalities associated with them that can really put your memory through a long-term test, burn it in, really cycle through a lot of different memory calculations in there and see if you can store and retrieve information properly from memory. If you have your Windows Vista CD around, you know you can put in your CD or DVD for Windows Vista. And when you start the installation process, there's an option to run some recovery tools. And these are the system recovery options that come up after that. You can start up repair, do a system restore, uh, do a Windows complete PC restore. That's if you've made some backups of your your Windows configuration. And here it is, the Windows Memory Diagnostic Tool. There's memory built into this. Now, Microsoft realizes that Windows 
really uses a lot of memory. There's constant communication, constant calculations, and information that's always being stored and retrieved from memory. So memory is a really, really important component inside of your computer for anything. It's nice that Microsoft just adds this, so you'll have it always available on that installation media. If you have something like the Ultimate Boot CD, there are other free memory tests you can use. This is called MemTest86. And although it's not very attractive on the screen, it is going through and testing a lot of different kinds of memory. And you've got a lot of different things it can do. It's doing a test number three where it's doing moving inversions of an 8-bit pattern. Yes, I have no idea what that is. But it sounds like it's really putting it through its paces, doesn't it? And you can really keep track of this. The really only thing we have to worry about is, is it passing or is it erroring? And that's what I want to know. Am I getting any errors in here? And if I am, then I know perhaps I have a problem with my memory and I should do something with it. Another nice program to use, this is the Windows Memory Diagnostic. I mentioned being able to use that. This is a, not a bad program either. I'm able to go through and really put through some tests and really understand what's going on. This is a good utility to use for memory diagnostics because if your manufacturer's motherboard memory diagnostic isn't finding something, but Microsoft's is, that's a pretty well-known memory diagnostics, and people tend to trust the results of that particular utility. So the question then becomes, how long do you let this utility run? We're going to set it up and do some diagnostics. How long before you really know if your memory is working properly? Well, the next question is, how much time do you have? A memory test can be relatively quick. A memory test might take an hour. And if you run more memory tests over a longer period of time, you can also see how your system uh, is working when there is additional heat, when it's working over a longer time frame. Especially if you get into an intermittent problem, it might be good to at least test it perhaps over a 24-hour period. And that tends to be pretty common when you're looking for those intermittent type problems. You also, if at all possible, run this under normal operating conditions. Have the cover on it. Maybe leave it where it is at the customer location or on the desk, wherever it happens to be. Slide in your memory diagnostic CD or DVD and just let it run. That way you've got the same thermal characteristics. The fan is blowing air through exactly the way it would be during a normal workday. And you can just let it churn through what it's doing. If you may be testing over a weekend when nobody's coming in, that's even better. You can come back Monday morning and see, how did it do over the weekend? Were there any problems associated with this test? Let's do some Q&A now and see what we've learned about troubleshooting memory. Our first question is, what should you check if your memory just isn't seen by your computer? You've turned on your computer after installing some new memory modules, and your computer knows nothing of them, can't see them at all. What could possibly be the problem? Well, it could be that we haven't seated them properly. They're just not all the way into the slot, and therefore your computer just isn't going to be able to make use of those. Our second question is, where can you find the Windows Memory Diagnostic Tool? It's a great Windows diagnostic utility you can use to check the memory on your computer. And the best place to find that is on the boot media in the recovery menu for the Windows Vista operating system. Makes it very, very easy to run. And lastly, what usually occurs if the post memory test fails? Well, if we're having a failure there, then we're probably going to hear some beeping noises. If your memory is not working, then nothing else is going to be able to operate in your computer either. So the best that your computer generally can tell you is that it can beep at you. It won't be able to display much on the screen probably, but at least you will know there's something very, very wrong here. Usually it's a series of beeps, and you'll be able to refer to your, your motherboard manufacturer to know if it gives me three beeps, that means that this is a memory problem, and then you can start troubleshooting from there. Well, that covers the information we need for our 220.702, section 1.2, where we've needed to detect problems, we've needed to troubleshoot, we've needed to repair the memory that's inside of our computers. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or just send me a message, visit our website at freeaplus.com.